Hey Pit Masters, what is up? Today we're going to be making chicken ribs. Everybody knows their pork ribs. They're yummy, soft, tender, delicious, and they taste amazing. Can we do the same thing, but then made out of chicken? The chicken has legs, the chicken has wings, and the chicken has a fillet. Everybody knows that, we make them all the time. But my biggest question is, why not make chicken ribs? So that is what we're going to do today. We're going to take apart our chicken and we're going to find out if we can make delicious ribs out of that chicken. As always, it starts with a good chicken. This is a label rouge chicken. Now you're wondering, what does that mean? Well, it means that this chicken has been running around freely without sitting in a cage, without fences. It been eating worms and it's been running around eating whatever it liked. And then it looks like this, a happy, nice, well-fed, slow-grown chicken with a lot of flavor. So, it's good for the chicken, it's good for flavor, why not go for quality, right? But they're really expensive. Well, they used to be really expensive, but nowadays they're getting cheaper and cheaper because everybody's asking for them. And the more we ask for these kind of chickens, the more cheap they will become. So just go for it, just do it. And over time, it will become less and less expensive. I want to get to the ribs, so the first thing that I'm going to do is cut this chicken in half. <laughs> I can see that these bones are tougher than a normal chicken that you buy in a store, like these fast-grown chickens. They got real soft and brittle bones, you just take your knife and break through it without any pain. But now, you're running into heavy bones from this chicken that has been growing slowly. So what we need to do right now is get out our poultry scissors and cut it up. We'll take our poultry scissors and we'll make it easy on ourselves and just cut all the way through. Now we open up the breast of the chicken and we're going to do the same on the inside. We're going to cut all the way along the backbone. Take your knife and do the last bit and there we have it the inside of the chicken. I'll quickly take off the backbone of the other part of the chicken. I don't want to take any of these bones out. I want to leave them on. Otherwise we're not gonna have any ribs. Look at that. They're just tiny, small ribs here. And then we have that soft breastbone on this side with bones here. All kinds of bones running in all kinds of direction. And that's why most people just want to take it off. But that's not what we're here for. We're going to just take off the leg and the wings. We're looking for that joint and then the connection to the back. There's our leg. We're going to set it aside. We'll take off the wing. And again, we're looking for that joint. We can feel it with our thumb. Take our knife and work our way towards that joint. That is our wing, set it aside, and this is our chicken rib. The fillet and the bones on the back. The bones are going to give our meat structure. If you have just that breast fillet, well, it's kind of loose in structure, it will dry out easily. But now we got some of that fat, we got some of that bone, and we got some skin. We got all kinds of goodness on this piece of meat. And I want to find out if we can well, have that same rib experience that you get from your pork ribs. This looks pretty good to me. I'm getting excited. We got the fillet. We got a lot of meat. We got some fat underneath. This is starting to look fantastic. Of course, we're going to need some seasoning. Some proper barbecue seasoning. That's why we're going to make our own barbecue rub. What's that? Well, that's demolition day. So my apologies for all of the noise that we got around this building and that we got in the studio. Can't help it. We're making good progress on demolition on the barn. We're removing all of the old concrete that is surrounding the barn. And yeah, it's gonna make a lot of noise, but hey, you can't stop the pit master. We're still gonna be cooking. We're still gonna make delicious barbecue food. Back to our rubs. I love making my own rub. It allows me to play with flavors. You kind of make like your own unique signature to a dish. And that's kind of fun, right? So I'm gonna give you a basics for the good rub and just work with it. Just put a little bit of salt in, a little less pepper, a little bit of cayenne extra. I'm gonna give you a good basic rub uh, with a little bit of Pitmaster craziness and you can make of it what you want afterwards. 
but you gotta try it first. Some of you already noticed that I'm using these jars lately and they are from the well-known hazelnut stuff that you put in your bread. The beauty of these things is that they have a plastic cup and basically it's a glass. So you put your rub in, put the cap on, you can shake it. But let me show you something else. Take a power drill and puncture holes in the lid. Clean up that lid a little bit. Make sure you got all of these little loose things that are hanging on to it off it. You don't want that on your meat. But hey, you get the point. You just made your own shaker. We'll start with my favorite salt for rubs, Fleur de Sel. It's a little bit more expensive than normal salt, but it's well worth it. We'll start with two tablespoons of that. To that we'll add one fourth of ground black pepper, one eighth part garlic powder, one eighth part onion powder, half a part of paprika powder, and to finish it off, half a part of curry powder. Mix it up. Now that it's mixed up, take off the lid, put on your shaker lid, and you got your shaker. I've given away so much good tips. Hope you guys all subscribed. What? Wait. I think, I think more some, someone didn't subscribe. There he is. I see him. Yeah, they should be scared of pit master eggs. I'm a scary guy. I got a knife, I got scissors. Now if you're like me and you're sitting out in the cold barbecuing in the winter time, I'm gonna give you guys another tip. Normally we would put on a little bit of olive oil to help make the rub stick to the chicken. But with this weather you can't put the olive oil on. It's too cold. So what's going to happen? You got the clog and it won't come out. But I got a substitute. You can substitute it by using some of Lee Perkins' Worcestershire sauce. This won't go thick in the cold, it will stay nice and fluid. And it will still help your rub stick and give you good flavor. So we'll sprinkle on a little dash, rub it in and shake on that beautiful rub with your brand new shaker. Now that our chicken is seasoned on both sides, we're going to fire up our Napoleon Prestige Pro. I'm going to turn on the outside burners. We're going to place our chicken over indirect heat on a high position. We'll close the lid and let our chicken come up to a temperature slowly. So we're going to set our barbecue at around 140 degrees Celsius. It's time to make a sauce and I started by making 200 milliliters of chicken broth. And to that we're going to add a cup of ketchup. We'll add three tablespoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon of honey, a tablespoon of mustard, half a tablespoon of ketchup mayonnaise, two teaspoons of Worcester sauce, and to finish it off, a one tablespoon of maple syrup. We'll mix it up and then put it on a hot stove and let it come to a boil until all of the crystals are dissolved. Our barbecue sauce has been reduced by half. It now has that nice smooth barbecue consistency. All of our crystals from the sugar and honey have been dissolved. It's now one honogamous, honogamous, honogamous smooth sauce with a lot of flavor. Honogamous, honogamous. Anyways, we made barbecue sauce. That's basically it. Now what I need from that sauce is I need it to be smooth because I'm going to brush it onto our chicken. Look at that. Beautiful. But before we brush it on, I want to check to see if we reach the desired core temperature of 75 degrees Celsius on our chicken. 77 degrees Celsius and we're looking for 75, so we're two degrees over. This is perfect. We're going to let these sit on the barbecue while we brush on the barbecue sauce. This chicken looks so good. We've got a nice crunchy crust on top. It's nice and smoked from the juices that have been done running down the grill and going back up onto the meat. I'm turning off the burners and now I can start brushing on that sauce. I don't want to demolish that crust that we build up. Just want to get it on. I'm not even going to flip this chicken around. It looks so good. While Denise is taking some pictures, we're giving the chicken the opportunity to rest. Let the juices flow freely, let the meat soften and relax. It's like a warm sauna that it's sitting in and it's completely chilling out. And then, when it's all done, Denise taking the pictures that we need, we're going to bite into them. Man, I can't wait for... what? I can't wait for them. Are you ready? Almost. Almost. Normally I would wait around for 10 minutes, but now it's probably going to be more like 20. Oh. Our chicken is done! Denise is taking all the pictures that we needed. It's finally time to dig in. I'm so excited about this. 
And the thing is like, when I checked this online, like did anyone do this before? I just found parts of chicken wings, which they call chicken ribs. And I think we're getting more close to what could actually be a chicken rib. The only thing that I didn't think about up front is that you can't cut into this because there's bones in here. Basically, we have to eat them as they are. Get ready. The trick is arms out, butt to the back. Take one and eat it. Where do we start? By cheers. Well, we didn't show Mars in the back yet. You have to check this out, Mars. Look at how crispy and nicely cooked that back is. You ready? Uh -huh. There we go. Mm. Oh. What? <laughs> it's messy. <laughs> but it tastes amazing. Mm. The flavors are good, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what? This is a juicy chicken. Morrison, take a look inside. See how juicy this chicken is. Look, my chicken is leaking. Look at that. I think it's so juicy because the way we cooked, we set it with the bones down and there's a membrane that protects the meat just like with the ribs. But with chicken, the membrane is really thin so you don't actually notice it. And then when you cook it, it just protects the meat of the, of the chicken. We cook it at a low temperature. The temperature in the chicken rises up, but it doesn't dry out. And then with the rub on, it also protects it. And it, the rub is nice and crispy and crunchy, but the sauce brings flavor and sweetness. Ooh, this is good stuff. Mm. I like this. Chicken ribs, guys. Absolutely amazing. Was it better than pork ribs? Officially, I can't say it's better than pork ribs because, you know, ribs, ribs are ribs but it's damn close. This is really good stuff. I wanna thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed it, then give us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. I wanna say a special thank you to our patrons and our YouTube members, you guys freaking rock. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, it's my luck. And keep on grilling. Good. That's good. Why didn't Colonel Sanders show up? I think he would be impressed with the chicken. Martian, take some. <laughs>